Hello and welcome back to Fulton Street Beats. We're going to take another quick look at this IYV bass today. Um, and I, this hasn't turned into a just a bass channel, just so you know. So bear with me, guys. It's just the way the cards are falling right now. Um, as you guys know, the prices of guitars and basses and anything musical is all over the place right now. So I have to kind of follow the trend to keep everything within a budget for the channel. So I assure you there'll be a lot more guitar reviews coming. Um, we do have another bass that's coming, and I'm not going to give out what it is, but it should be pretty cool, very inexpensive, and if you know this channel, we like to deal on the inexpensive side with budget guitars, budget basses, and what have you, budget equipment in general. And I'd like to present you guys things that work on a budget, or at least that is acceptable, um, without breaking the bank, because times are tough. So, this is the IYV bass. Um, and I had a viewer comment that uh, they just didn't uh, notify Amazon about the color change on these. Well, this came in a natural box, so obviously that wasn't the case for this bass guitar. I haven't seen another one of this particular style in this color yet. Um, but it's pretty cool. I'm glad I got something that's, well, it's not uh, readily available, so that's pretty cool. Any complaints on the bass? I've been looking, I've been trying, I've been trying to find one. Um, of course, I could complain that it doesn't have full-size pots, but realistically, that would just be a uh, psychosomatic complaint because they function well and they sound good. The bass does everything it's supposed to, and the action is incredible. The fretwork is incredible, the fretboard is incredible. So I'm digging it. Um, I'm really trying to find a flaw. Finish-wise, I can't find anything. It's simply amazing. The only grape that I had when the bass came is that it had compounds slung in some of the holes in the back and things, and but I got that out. That's not a big issue. It does have a high mass bridge. The pickup sounds amazing. The tone controls work amazing, and yes, it is two tones and two volumes, but they have made the volumes so they blend um, and split each side of the pickup to blend the tones in together. So it gives you the illusion that you have more tones than what you do, and I guess realistically you do have more tones than what you do normally would because of the way it splits it because it does change the tone characteristics although it really is a volume um, so I hope that makes sense if you haven't seen that video where I explain how these work go back and watch that um, action's amazing five string I thought I was gonna have trouble with a five string and it took a bit of getting used to however once you're used to it it's pretty easy it's easy to work the fretboard um, I thought it might have been, you know, harder to reach on, but it's really not. It's a comfortable neck. It's a fast neck. It stays in tune well. I have tuned it a couple times, and that's because the strings were new. Probably going to be going to some flat mounts um, on this also, just because I really like the way they play. And uh, my first experience with flat mounts was on my Rick build that I did when I put them on that. And, man, I really got addicted to them. They, they just have a really nice tone, and they're controllable. Um, they don't overring, they're just perfect, they're great for muting. And for the type of playing that I like to do on a bass, I get that nice rap with a rank. It's just it's just a quick tap. I like that tapping sound, you can get that depending on where you have your tone control set. Um, but it's really cool. So anyhow, we're going to be doing a lot more guitar reviews. I have some things planned, but the guitars right now are a bit more pricey, so I have to plan those out a little more, and there's something special. I want to bring to you guys as far as guitars go but we're going to have another bass that's coming in like i said soon but let's take this iyv today and um put it to i haven't put it to i mean you guys have heard it um right now i'm going to be running through reaper i've been using audacity and it just doesn't it doesn't um well it sounds great here in the studio when i've done it when it's the finished products are horrible so um we're going to be trying something new with reaper today and see if reaper can can um can hit maybe hit a home run unlike audacity and i'm there with me because i'm getting used to reaper um it's it's different for me anyhow so we're gonna do a really funky backing track and i'm gonna overlay some bass on top of that and the object of this video is not to overbear you with the bass but to blend it in nicely so it sounds like it's part of the dynamic of this backing track and that's what this five string does really well it seems to blend and add to dynamic of uh, whatever they, whatever you're laying it over. And yes, you can make it punchy and turn it up and you can overbear anything and you can make it stand out, but that's not the purpose. You guys have heard the tones of this bass, so 
let's blend it and see how it'll blend with the backing track. Is it going to sound like it was produced with it? Because that's that's really my point. Um, not going to be doing anything special. We're going to be running through the Vox uh, practice amp today, but we're going to run it directly into my audio interface. And um, just a real standard bass tone, um, no effects today. So I hope that makes sense. So without any further ado, let's do that. And if you haven't already, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Um, really helps out my algorithms and the numbers are going up. Everything's really cool. I'm really enjoying this, guys. I'm really enjoying you. Um, you guys have been great uh, following me on this journey, this YouTube journey, and it's been fun. So let's just keep it going and uh, hopefully I can get better and grow with you and you guys will stick by my side. You guys rock, man. Okay, here you go. I'll be right back. Okay, so here we are in my little corner of the world over here, and uh, this backing track's pretty funky. I've listened to it a couple times. I'm going to try to play to it. Um, it's quite fast. I'm kind of going to try to make this up as I go. Uh, as you know, we do things very raw and uncut here. So let's just see what we can do with it and see if this has, if we can blend this, and that's the whole key. I want to see if, I think that this, okay, I need to oil my stool. I think uh, that this bass is really good for playing funk and it's got a nice blending quality to it. So let's hit arm and go for it and see what we got. All right.
Okay, so just a little taste of it, not uh, going overboard and like I ham hampers a little bit. It is a cool base, and I hope that filled in nice. Um, once again, not my best playing in the world, but hey, it's the first time playing the track. And as with anything, you'll hear it again, and it will get better. So thanks for watching Fulton Street Beats, and thanks for watching this. IYV base. I keep wanting to say IV. IYV. Thanks, guys. Hit that like button. Share. Subscribe. Peace out, and I'll be back soon.